When it comes to downwinding on a paddleboard, I'm a complete newbie. That's why I've asked three-time world champion, downwind master, and pro sup athlete Fiona Wild from Hood River, Oregon to teach me and you some downwind techniques today. Once we got those tips down, we're gonna head on out for a downwind paddle to put those tips into practice. And then afterwards, we're gonna talk about the gear we used and how it performed for us on the water. So without further ado, here's Fiona Wild. Hey everybody, how's it going? Fiona Wilds here and I'm really excited to go downwinding with you all today. We have a beautiful location at Punto Pescarero, which is just north of Los Barriles in Baja California Sur. It's uh, actually where I grew up and this is where I spend my winters and it's some of the most amazing training grounds. So today we're going to talk about downwinding. Um, there's, I mean, for me, downwinding is so much fun. You can go downwinding all over the world. You have some breeze, you have some good downwind bumps. Um, it's basically like like continuous surfing so you just go out there and you have fun but in order to go out and have fun like with any aspect of stand-up paddling or water sports you need to be safe and you need to be aware so first things first know where your put in is know if you have some obstacles for example right here behind me you're gonna see some rocks so I'm gonna pick and choose wisely where I go in the water um, next thing to notice is you know, the wind. What direction is the wind coming from? Is it pretty steady? Is it consistent? Are there things that could possibly change? Uh, you always want to have a good idea of what the weather forecast is supposedly saying. And as we know, weather forecasts can change. So please be mindful. Uh, and before you even get in the water, know where your exit strategy is. Know where you're going to be taking out from your downwind run and know if you have an exit somewhere along your downwind run. So if something goes wrong or you need to help somebody out, there's a way that you can get out of the water safely and get some help. So before I get in the water, I'm going to do a safety check. I'm going to make sure that I have all the proper equipment with me ready to go. So for anybody that's going downwinding, uh, you need a paddle, you need a board, you need a leash. That is one of the absolute most important things when going downwinding, because if you fall off your board and the wind takes your board and you don't have a leash, you're gonna be swimming out there somewhere and you're not gonna have a big floaty device. Talking about floaty devices, PFDs. Uh, there's all sorts of different PFDs you can wear. The most common for going stand-up paddling uh, is a waist PFD, especially if you're going to be doing long distance paddles. Um, so waist PFD is super important. You want to make sure it has the CO2 cartridge in it so you can uh, safely pull it if you are in a situation where you need a PFD. Additionally, I always have a hydration pack. This hydration pack has my sunscreen in it, it has my phone, and because I have type 1 diabetes, it actually has my insulin pump in it so I can always stay connected, and it has whatever snacks and stuff like that that I need. So, with safety checked off, with your route checked off, you know, you're excited, you may be a little bit nervous, you got a good mindset, you're ready to go, you're ready to go have some fun, it's time to get in the water and get out there and catch some bumps. All right, so, when it's time to get out in the water, you know, paddling in bumpy conditions, paddling with a little bit of wind is different than just jumping on your board and paddling when it's flat calm. So the biggest tip I can give you is keep your eyes up, look around and bend your knees. Be ready for the fact that your board is gonna move in all sorts of different directions and that's a little bit different than when you're just, you know, cruising on some flat water. So for example, here, I'm gonna be paddling upwind a little bit because I wanna head up and out to get into a few of the bigger bumps. So I'm probably gonna have to paddle on one side of my board more than the other. So it's a good idea to warm up for starters to make sure that your body is you know, loose and ready to go. Um, and also when I say warm up, it's not just your shoulders, it's not just your upper body. Think about your legs too. When you're downwinding, we're gonna be moving a lot on your board. Your toes are gonna be really engaged and you want to be able to move your feet around so you know do some leg swings whatever you need to do to get your body ready just like you would in any other sport um, when it comes to downwind paddling it's a very proactive and reactive type of paddling uh, sometimes there's going to be some really good bumps and you're going to think yes this is going to be the best ride of my life and you can't catch them and you're like what happened you know I, I thought I could catch that so it takes time to learn how to catch bumps properly and how to surf the bumps um, 
you know, a, a lot of times we spend so much energy trying to catch the bumps in the first place that once we get on them, uh, we don't really keep staying on the bumps and keep our uh, speed going for very long. And when I mean bump, I mean little swell. So that's what I'm referring to when I say a bump when you're catching. I tend to look at stand-up paddle downwinding as kind of like interval paddling. Uh, you know, when you are on a bump, when you're on a swell, that's when you want to paddle harder to maintain your speed and your stability. Uh, stability is your friend and you get stability by keeping your paddle in the water and by keeping speed on your board. So before we get too technical into all of that stuff, um, you know, here on my board, when I'm, you know, paddling in flat water or something like that, I'm going to have my feet, you know, probably about here. Now, when I'm downwinding, I'm going to start with my feet. They're going to be standing a little bit further back and I'm going to be really flexible on my board. Um, my feet are going to be, you know, about here with the ability to move back. So I'm constantly doing something like, okay, cool. I'm paddling, you know, my feet are pretty much straightforward. All right, I'm balanced, I'm balanced side to side. Okay, cool, I'm starting to catch a bump. What happens? One foot goes forward slightly and my next foot goes back. It's this motion going from here to here that if you wanna practice at home is a really good way to practice by, you know, keeping everything pretty solid, your knees are bent, you're paddling, your paddle is in the water. If you ever feel like you're gonna fall in, put your paddle in the water. You can lean on your paddle. It's a huge, huge tip for making sure you don't fall in as much. Um, also saves you a lot of energy. So you can lean on your paddle. It's a really good brace. When you're going to catch a little swell, sometimes it's really hard to know when you need to paddle hard and when, you know, it's time to sit there, stand like, you know, get the hero shot, stand on the wave and glide. So let's talk a little bit about how to catch a swell when you're downwinding. Uh, in surfing, you know, you're always kind of looking out to the horizon and whatnot. In stand-up paddling, you're facing downwind. The waves, the swell is coming from behind you. So you have to learn how to read what's coming from behind you by looking at what's in front of you. And that takes a little bit of time. So if you don't get it on your first downwind run or your second or your third, don't stress about it. It takes a while to learn how to do it. So what I'm looking for when I say I'm reading the swells in front, you'll notice your board will dip down and all of a sudden your board, the nose of your board will be going slightly underneath the wave in front of it. That means that the wave behind you is getting lifted. Your board is being lifted by the wave behind you and that's when it's time to focus, do some quick high intensity strokes and all of a sudden your board will release and you'll feel that acceleration. As soon as you start to feel the acceleration, that's when you take your feet and instead of just staying in a parallel stance, you take your, you know, whichever side, if you're goofy or regular, it doesn't matter, you take your back leg and go into your surf stance, okay? That'll keep you balanced on your board, that'll keep your stability from side to side, keeping you on top of your board, and then from there, quick paddle strokes to keep yourself going. Eventually, that swell will roll underneath and you start the process over again and keep yourself, you know, moving forward one swell at a time and you will eventually get to the point where you can look to the right, connect to swell this way. You'll be able to read which direction the troughs go and you'll be like, oh, cool, this trough is gonna take me to the right. I'm gonna step back, use the rail, turn to the right. Cool, and then you look at the next trough, you're gonna go to the left and so on and so forth. And that's how you see the videos where, you know, you're actually planing and cruising down the swell for a long time. Um, it all comes from reading the waves and the swell that are in front of you and making the decision and figuring out how to connect them. So one other thing about downwinding and a really common mistake I see uh, a lot is um, people get really tired really quickly. So if you feel that your board isn't starting to accelerate and you're not starting to catch waves, you don't have to grind super, super hard to try and get on that. Wait until you feel your board lift a little bit and you feel that the swell is actually helping you. That's when you wanna start paddling hard. So that's where I say like, when you go out there, cruise, you know? 
figure out how you feel on your board, figure out your comfort level, um, you know, paddle on both sides and whatnot, just to kind of get into a rhythm. And then once you start to notice that your board all of a sudden has these slight, slight accelerations, like I'm talking very slight, but you'll feel it. Um, that's when you can realize, oh, cool. That's what she was talking about. Now I'm gonna try and paddle a little bit harder. And if you find yourself getting really tired, like you're, you're paddling super, super hard, um, but you're not catching them, take a break. You know, you don't have to push it the whole, um, the whole downwind run. It's, um, downwinding is very different than going for a distance paddle. You know, in a distance paddle, you would find, you know, a pretty consistent tempo and try and keep that the whole time. And downwinding, there's times where you are pretty much sprinting and then there's times when you are you know relaxing so try and mediate your heart rate um, you know grab a few sips of water whatever it is that you need but just know that uh, it's it's a different type of paddling all right so now we've got some of those tips and tricks from Fiona we're gonna get warmed up here and head on out for our downwind paddle <laughs> All right, we have made it back and I've successfully survived my first official downwind paddle. So super stoked about that. So now we take some time to talk about some of the gear we used for our downwind session to see how it performed for us and some of our thoughts on that as well. So starting off talking about the boards, I obviously use from Jordan my paddle, the inflatable all-star race board. Now this is a 14 by 26 inch model and overall did pretty well. Now this is obviously my first official downwind experience, so still a lot of learning to do. I definitely fell quite a bit still, but overall, I still feel like it did pretty well providing stability on the water and give me a pretty good learning experience as well, paddling for the first time. Now I did try Fiona's board as well, which is a little bit more narrow at 22 and a half inches. And I did feel the difference, but by having the extra taller rails on the dugout um, board as well, did help provide me with some more stability while paddling on the water. The, the biggest difference I noticed between these two boards with the downwind session though, is the amount of volume in the nose of the paddle board. I feel like with the, the hard board, there's more volume in the front of the board, which allows it to pop out of the water easier when trying to catch those bumps, which also allows you to ride those bumps much easier. With the inflatable board, since the volume is spread out through the entire paddle board, I did notice I had to stand further back on the paddle board, helping me keep the nose out between each swell and each wave, because otherwise the nose would just bury itself and I would just come flying off the front of the board with every time it grabbed that water. So there's some big differences that I noticed between these two boards while paddling on this downwind session. I would still say that the inflatable paddle board is definitely still capable of these conditions, but I would say overall, my personal preference if I was doing this long term is definitely the hard board version of this. Overall, it does perform much better. But those are some of my thoughts on the two paddle boards. So I'm gonna pass over to Fiona, let her share some of her thoughts as well on these paddle boards. Thanks, yeah, I think you pretty much described everything super well. Um, so the, this is the All-Star 14 by 22 and a half, um, and the Airline All-Star is the version, the inflatable version of this board. So we're pretty much comparing um, apples and apples here. It's just two different construction models, um, but obviously this board you can roll up and uh, check it in like a suitcase when you go on a trip anywhere in the world. This board uh, is a little bit harder to take with you on trips, so it all depends where you live, uh, where you're paddling, all that stuff. Um, 
you know, and personal preference as well. However, that being said, I mean, the fact that we got to go on a downwinder together, one with a composite board, the other with an inflatable, still have a blast, uh, says so much about uh, all the different types of boards that are out there, and you can have fun with any board that you are on. That being said, uh, the like Ethan mentioned, having a lot more volume in the nose on the composite board really does make a di big difference for catching bumps. Once you're on a bump, the boards do surf the bump pretty similarly, but the inflatable does take a lot more effort up front, especially for somebody my size, um, to catch uh, a bump compared to the composite all-star. But that being said, this one's 22 and a half inches wide, and that one's 26. So that also is a big factor in when you are paddling, not just in flat water, but in bumpy conditions and all that stuff too. Um, one other thing to think about when you are uh, going to be paddling an inflatable and downwind conditions, uh, when you take your feet off the board and go ahead and start moving your feet around the board, the stability is going to change a little bit. You know, it has, uh, for an inflatable board, it has incredible rails that can hold a long time before releasing, but you still have to be aware that your board is going to move differently under your feet if you're used to a composite board. But nonetheless, you can go out there, you can paddle upwind, you can paddle downwind, you can catch amazing bumps and have an absolute blast regardless of which board you're on and for what board works better for where you live, what kind of paddling you do, where you're traveling. It's, you know, doesn't really matter as long as you're out there having fun. All right, moving on to our paddles and fins. Today I used the Black Project Sup Hydroflow X paddle, which honestly did super well in this downwind session today. By having the deep scoop technology in the blade, I would always provide you with a solid grasp of the water every time I'm paddling. So I love that about these paddles. As well as I used our Maliko fin. Now this is a larger downwind fin out of the two fins that we used today. So I chose to use this one because since I'm more of the newbie beginner in the downwind session, I wanted to use a larger fin that had a larger surface area, which provides me more stability and control while I'm paddling these conditions. So I definitely felt that, especially when I changed boards with Fiona. The other fin was definitely more squirrely, but I do feel like over time with more practice, I do see the benefits of the smaller fin. But for my first time session, this larger fin did so much better for what I needed to do. So on the other hand, I'm using starboard paddles. Uh, this is the Lima, uh, which is the typically the race paddle that we're going to be using. I use a medium blade, uh, which is always a big question around people um, my size. In I'm only five foot two, so people wonder like, oh, should I use a medium or a small? But it really depends on power output um, and also the stiffness of the shaft too. You can mess around and have all sorts of different uh, type of shafts, whether you want them to be uh, more flexy or more stiff. And so I go kind of with like your medium stiffness, which in Starboard's term is called an S40. So I use a medium blade with the Lima and an S40 um, shaft as well. So that's what I personally like to race on, but it takes a little while to figure out, you know, what's best for you. If you're getting into paddling, I would always suggest to go with a slightly smaller blade at the beginning because a lot of people go with the biggest blade possible and that, you know, it actually doesn't really help you go faster. It just wears down your body a bit more. Um, so, for example, I will probably never paddle a large blade, even for sprinting, just because of my body size and my energy output. Um, one really interesting thing about paddles uh, is you can use different paddles and different length paddles depending on what board you're on. So for me, this length paddle felt great when I was on uh, my 14-foot All-Star, the composite board. But then when I jumped on the inflatable, because it's a flat deck, it doesn't have um, a recession in the deck, my paddle felt really short. It felt like I really needed to bend over a lot more to get a good, powerful stroke in the water compared to what I'm used to. So keep in mind when you're trying different paddles, um, it really does depend on what type of board you're on as well, where if it's a flat deck or if it has a recession in the deck as well. So just some food for thought. In terms of fins, I was on the Black Project Sonic today. Um, we put the Maliko in the inflatable board, which the Maliko is gonna give you a lot more stability, uh, both lateral stability and while you're tracking down a swell. The Sonic is a lot more squirrely. If you, uh, <laughs> when you first jump on it, you're gonna feel that the tail kind of moves around a little bit. And um, 
you really have to use the rails in addition to the fin to help keep you tracking in the direction that you want to go. So if you're new to downwind paddling, I would definitely suggest starting with a Maliko. The other thing is if you're graduating to a narrower board, it's not a bad idea to stay with a slightly more stable, bigger fin like the Maliko. Get comfortable on your board and then you can mess around and play with the Sonic and the Tiger. Um, but all in all, I absolutely love both the Sonic and the Tiger. I use them both interchangeably pretty much every day. It just depends on the conditions. And um, yeah, it was a blast. <laughs> So just like Fiona said, we had an awesome time downwinding here today in Baja California, sir. Just want to give a huge thanks and shout out to Fiona for taking the time to come out here and teach me and you some downwind techniques. So hopefully you learned some th a thing or two from today's video and go and apply these techniques on your next downwind session. I also want to give a huge shout out to Black Project Sup for providing the fins and pals for today's downwind session. If you're interested in learning more about them and their equipment, be sure to check out the link down in the description box below. We're also doing a giveaway of two Black Project fins that were signed by Fiona herself. And so if you're interested in learning about how to win those fins, be sure to check out the details down below as well. That's it for today's video though, and we'll catch you guys in the next one.